Thank you. I just wanted to spin off what Marilyn said. There's 95,000 inmates in the state of Florida. The recidivism rate is 85% of those that get out and go back in. The, um, of the Christians, the people that are involved in Christian studies while they're there, only 35% go back into the prison system. The problem is that only about 30% of all those in prison are, take advantage of the, the classes that are offered there. So there is a great hope. And uh, also the, to be able to help in places like where Maryland is, where you don't have to go through the wire and everything, that's also a nice uh, treat too. So. But uh, sometimes the first trip or two through the wire is a little bit uh, nerve racking for people, but uh, they get over it, don't they, Martha? <laughs> so, um, we're in Ephesians chapter uh, 4, which is about verse 25 today. Um, we're talking about birthdays. Our oldest granddaughter, our next one's over here, but our oldest one's birthday was yesterday, and uh, her birthday was yesterday, her adoption date was the next day, so she was a day and a half old when uh, our kids got her 30, 20 years ago now. Unbelievable. Uh, time flies. Uh, what? Wow. Yeah, that's what I said. Wow. So anyway, it is amazing how fast the time goes. And uh, one of the good things we're involved in it, that's important. So anyway, we're in Ephesians chapter uh, 4. And we've been talking about, first of all, the first three chapters are about the doctrines. Paul really works on the doctrines. And then the next, uh, from uh, 4 through 6, he's going to talk about how to live out our life on a daily basis into the place that we are. We talked last week about, uh, we talked last couple weeks about gifts, and then a walking uh, in holiness. And then this week we're going to continue on. Last week we talked about the fact that we be, have become new people, a new person. And the picture is that he has is we take our coat off, our outer, our old flesh, we take it off and we set it aside. And we put on a new flesh, we put on Christ. And so he says in verse uh, 24, and put on a new self, which in the light of, of God has been created in righteousness and holiness uh, of the truth. And so we put on a new a self, and that's the righteousness and holiness. So we begin to live our life out in a way that glorifies and reflects God, Christ, into the into the world. And there are some presuppositions there. When we, first of all, we need to know Christ to put on the new coat. The second thing is we need to take a look at to see what, how we should live our life if we're going to reflect Christ into the, into the world. He says in verse 25, Therefore, laying aside, here's some of the things that we have to do. Lay aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and yet not sin, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Uh, and do not give the devil an opportunity. Verse 28, let him who steals, steal no longer, but rather let him labor, performing with his own hands what is good, in order that he may be, have something to share with him who has needs. So we see right off the bat, we lay aside, we lay aside things like falsehood. We, we lay and we begin to, we begin to speak the truth each other, we begin to be truthful with one another, and uh, we are each one with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. We're all become part of the family. And even if we're not part of, they're all family of God, we still are to be people that reach out and to reflect the, the goodness of God into their lives. And he says, it goes on to say, for we are members of one another. We are members of one another. We're all part of the, of our, the population. Wherever it is that you live, if you're part of that group, is you can either kind of just reject it or you can become involved in it and, and bring Christ into the mix. Uh, be angry and do not sin. Uh, and do not let sun go down on your anger. So we can be angry and not sin. Uh, I've been working on that one. Uh, but And then again, don't let, don't let anger, uh, the sun go down on your anger. Don't. Don't hold it uh, into your own being because all it does is disrupt you. It doesn't. And one of the things about anger and bitterness, the people that you're angry and that you're bitter against oftentimes have no idea. It's all, it only just, the whole root just develops in you. 
and, and doesn't really uh, affect anybody but you. Let him who steals, verse 28, no longer, steal no longer, but rather let him labor, perform with his own hands what is good, in order that he may have something to share with him who has need. And so if a person has been caught being doing thief, being a thief or living an improper life, the Bible says don't do it anymore, get a job and uh, make some money and help other people as a kind of the, <coughs> the word there. And so when people are able to have an opportunity to do the work and then to share what they gather, it helps to build them up in, in their life. And then verse 29, let no unwholesome or rotten word proceed from your mouth, but only uh, such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, that it may give grace to those who hear. And so we should, the things that come out of our mouth should edify those that are around us and build us up. And Derek was saying earlier about how people talk about their children and now you're never going to amount to anything. And that sort of just convinces them early on. And so we need to be people that encourage people that we have encountered. We have the, the gift of encouraging others that they're doing good, that they can continue. And that doesn't mean we can say, oh, well, you're, you're doing really sloppy. We can help them grow into that. But we should encourage them to become... Um, to become uh, more efficient in the work that they do and not to build them down. Uh, and so that they may, uh, that for the red edification according to the need of the moment, that it may give grace to those who hear. And then in verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom we were sealed for the day of redemption. We, we are not to live our life in a way that is, brings grief to the Holy Spirit, that we do things that really are not uh, in the line of what he would teach us to do. That we live our life that is a reflection of Christ into the world, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and that we don't bring grief, that we don't bring grief, we don't grieve him. And then in verse 31, here's these next few things. Let all bitterness, let all bitterness, and again we talk about bitterness. Bitterness are things that we hang on to, we hang on to, we never let them go. We say, I forgive you, but we really don't, we just hang on to it. We just we cling a hold of that until the very end. And then he says, let all bitterness and wrath, again, things that we want to you know, really pound people with, and anger and clamor and slander, be put away from you along with all malice. These are the things that God has for us to put away as we put on the new self. We put away all bitterness. Uh, for some people, for some people that's really a hard thing because something's happened to it a long time ago. And we, we never are able to let it go. We just cling on to it. But we need to give that to God. We need to give that to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to take it away, to make a choice that we're going to move that on. And then wrath, things that we want to get even with. And anger, anger that we build up uh, because of something that's happened. Clamor and then and slander. But, the, but we put away from you, we put away from you along with all malice. All those things that, the truth of the matter is they affect our lives personally. Those sort of things, they just, they grip us and they won't let us go and it impacts our daily life when we live that way. So it's, he says for us to put, a, put those away, get rid of those, put them in the old self over here and be done with it. And as we put on the new self, and then in verse 32, here's what he says that we're to do, you and I are to do. We are to be kind to one another. We're to be kind to one another. Think, think about it this, if we really began to live this way in our life. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, tender-hearted, if we're tender-hearted, and forgiving each other. We forgive each other. Some of us have things that we hold grudges against, we have bitterness, but also we just, we won't, we won't uh, forgive the other. We just, we cling on to it. Sometimes that's our greatest. It's almost like an anchor. It's almost like an anchor. We just hang on to it. The only problem is it is like an anchor. It takes us down under the water. Not good. And so we aren't really able to deal in a way that's effective to minister to other people. So he says for us to be kind to one another, be tender-hearted, forgiving each other, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. So we have taken off the old self and we put on the new self. That new self is that we that we are kind to one another. We're kind to one another. Is that we're tender hearted and that we forgive one another. And we live the way our life out realizing that Christ 
himself. God has forgiven us of the way we lived through Jesus Christ. I, um, I often think about that because sometimes it's easy to say, well, that person's really a mess. I know none of you ever say that, but sometimes I think that. And uh, but then I think, wow, I was really a mess too until the Lord intersected my life. I thought you were, and you were a mess before. Yeah. The Lord intersected your life as well. But this is why, to live out the faith, to live out the faith is to live this way, to live tender hearted, to live that we uh, forgive one another, and to live that we care for one another, because that's what Christ has done for you and for me. We think about Palm Sunday, we think about the fact that Christ is coming, he's coming into to Jerusalem, and the people are cheering him and cheering him, and yet just around the corner he's going to be crucified. But he was willing to do that whole process for you and for me. Isn't that amazing that he would do that for you? A sinner such as I, that he'd be willing to go through the agony of the cross and be laid in the tomb because of his great love for you and for me. What does that do to us? What does that mean to us as we read this scripture? What do we do? We need to be willing to set aside all the old self and to put on the new self and to impact the, our community and our world for Jesus Christ because of what he's done for us. And when we do that, we see lives change. We see people inspired. We see people helping other people. We see people caring for other people. And we began to understand that ultimately that's what our, our, our mission here on earth is, to share Jesus and to encourage others to come together and to love <laughs> one another. What a great challenge that is for us uh, as we think of the Easter season. We think of this time of the year, and oftentimes we, we, had, well, we had a nice Easter egg hunt. That was really nice. We, we see lots of stuff going on, lots of family gatherings. But in the, often in the undercurrent of all that stuff, there's, ang there's anger, there's, there's bitterness, there's people that are unresolved issues. Help us, help us to be people that have put on the new self in Christ Jesus. And that we, in this season, we become men and women and boys and girls that reach out and share the love of Jesus with others, that they see the living flesh of Christ in, this, in our community this year. And as we do that, as we do that, we then are empowered to even do more because we realize what, what that great uh, satisfaction of helping others is in Christ Jesus. I challenge you this week that you really reach out to people, encourage people, and to edify people, to encourage them as they go along, and to Father, to, that each of us would kind of set aside our bitterness and anger and wrath, all those things that hold us back, and that we focus on the goodness of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we're able to gather together. We thank you that, that Father, you've given us, through your Son Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, you've empowered us to make a difference for others. You've empowered us to have a real live impact on Resurrection Sunday. As an amazing thing, and, and we so often let the power of the resurrection slide by. What a great opportunity for you, for each one of us, to be carriers of the resurrection, to impact other people as we encounter them, even yet today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to sing together. Uh, he is exalted. He is exalted. The King is exalted.
Father, we do exalt you, we raise you, we know that you're on high. We know what's even a greater thing, we know that you have come and you reside in our heart through the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, we not only exalt you, but we live for you as we go on day by day and moment by moment. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week. See you on Easter Resurrection Sunday.